I want to tell you a brief story about the expedition of Lewis and Clark. And the reason why you're looking at this bridge is because this is where it all started. Actually, it started right here at the Ohio River. <laughs> of course, Lewis and Clark began their journey. I don't know if many of you know this, but it actually started in Pittsburgh. But this is where it all began right here. They sailed down from Pittsburgh up here into the north. And they began their journey right about here because this is where you see this train bridge here off to my left, to your left, that is the beginning of the Beaver River. Lewis and Clark traveled all the way down there, seeking exploration, meeting Indians, meeting trappers, perhaps fur traders. But more importantly than that, what you're seeing right here is where it all happened. This is the beginning of the expansion westward. This is where it all started. This is where it's at. This is the gateway to the west. This is where Lewis and Clark, probably on keelboats, came here and explored well before what you see here, which was nothing but the river itself, the two rivers itself, and lots of forest lands covered. Everything would have been covered in green. Everything would have been covered in wood. Everything would have been covered by water. Now, of course, the water levels back then were probably much lower than they are now. But it still would have been a dangerous setting for Lewis and Clark. They would have been subjected to hostile Indian attacks, raids. And of course, depending on what kind of fur trappers would have been in and out of here, it's hard to determine just what kind of encounters they would have had. Even though they have kept journals, they didn't record everything that they saw, heard, and did and said. Even though what is even more interesting is they have an abundance in their journals of all the animals that they experienced and witnessed seeing around in their native habitats. And of course, one of those animals here in southwestern Pennsylvania would have been the mountain lion, which is now defunct. It's extinct here in this part, although there are sightings continued to be reported that people have seen mountain lions. But this, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who live out west, for those of you who watch my videos in Los Angeles and Seattle and San Francisco and places like that, this is where it all started. What you're seeing here is the gateway to the west. This is where it would have happened. This is where it would have began. And also, this is a very unique place for Indian diversity. Native Americans were strewn all through this wonderful region of the Ohio Valley, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. One of those would have been Chief Logan, and Chief Logan of the Mingo tribe, whose family was mercilessly slaughtered by white settlers, and he had uh, vengeance on all white settlers in this area. He would have traveled through canoe. He would have known this area quite well. He would have taken scalps here, along with probably King Beaver. Well, even more than King Beaver. King Beaver was relatively known as a quiet and peaceful man, but his brother Shingas was also as probably unequivocally as deadly as Logan was. But Logan had every reason to hate white settlers because they butchered his family mercilessly. His sister was pregnant with child. And I don't mean to be so graphic, but the unborn baby was actually cut out of the womb and scalped. That's how bloody it was. What you're seeing right here is where it all started with wars, famine, pestilence, lots of blood spilled on this ground to carve out all these magnificent bridges, railroads, trains. I have made websites in honor of all these wonderful stories that I'm going to tell you, but I just thought that it would I'd take it upon myself to just show you how significant this little structure geographical piece of land is because this is where the United States expands into the great country that it is now. But it wasn't all innocent. There was a lot of bloodshed. There was a lot of war. There was a lot of hardship. And I have taken it upon myself to record these stories and bring them in formats which I feel are going to be more effective in demonstrating my knowledge of this and how to share it with you. And let's begin right here reading this. Native American villages stood on both sides of the Beaver River from the 1720s through the 1780s. Low-level floodplains and islands were fertile soils for fields of corn, beans, and squash. The villages were occupied by the Delaware, who named the area Saukunk, meaning mouth of the stream, Shawnee, Mingo, and others. Following the Revolutionary War, the land became part of the reserved track lands for payment to soldiers 
The land, including an island at the confluence of the Beaver and Ohio Rivers, was owned by Absalon Baird, a Revolutionary War soldier and doctor. Members of the Harmony Society purchased the land from Baird in 1803 and named it Beaver Point. Now, what's interesting about that is, is because the Harmonites were the ones who were very staunch abolitionists, and they were the ones who occupied this land for not very long period of time, but little is known about them in their history and their magnificent contribution that they did to what is commonly known as the Underground Railroad. The Harmonites were major contributors to that operation. And even though there is not a statue in this county or in the adjacent counties to them, they played a significant contribution to that. I have written essays about that, but I haven't published them on any of my websites. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet, but if I decide to do so, I will let you know. But you have an abundance here here in southwestern Pennsylvania with Indians. I mean, you want to talk about diversity, ladies and gentlemen. You have Algonquin and Iroquois, both, who settled these lands, who lived in these lands, and who occupied these lands. I can't think of being more diverse than that. You're talking about hundreds of different languages, cultures, customs, tribal customs, communications, religions, storytelling, all quite different from one another. And it all blended beautifully here in this country, which is commonly known today as the Ohio Valley region. So join me on this journey. I'm gonna talk about a lot more stories and a lot more of the chiefs that I've mentioned in this video. I wanna present this in a format that I think is going to be beneficial and educational for all of you. So I'm sorry you're looking at a bunch of water, but it's significant. I want you to just look at this and ponder what exactly